All right. All right, mate. All right. Hoorah. Hey, why don't we start the podcast this way? <laughs> Maybe we'll go with casual. Let's give it a try. Hey, guys. Welcome to Overvolted. I am your host, Kirk Johnson. We have Matthew and Aurelian joining us. Say hi. Hey. Hi. We have a lot to go through real quick. We have Intel in their architecture day. We got a big data dump from that. And we have a little bit of more information about NVIDIA's new GPUs and a little bit of fun at the end about consoles. So let's go ahead and get started. Matthew, you want to lead us off? I think you forgot one topic there too, Kirk. It's a surprise. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we're saving that for the end? No, we can jump into it, but let's start with the architecture day because we got a lot to go through. Okay. Uh, but first, of course, we have to read the disclosure. Uh, statements in this presentation that refer to future... I'm just kidding. Let's, let's go right to... What, they, let's, actually, let's skip ahead. they actually have one, you mean? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, let's right get, Let's skip ahead. Go to slide Goals 16. Goals and Go intentions. So on slide 16, we have uh, their roadmap. And the only reason I thought this was interesting, I, I just noticed this now, they have a bunch of pluses from 14 nanometer to 10 nanometer. <laughs> Now, I noticed the exact same thing. Officially, it only goes up to fourteen plus plus, but I get I don't know if this is like some like unofficial thing. You can also see these circles like aren't even like perfectly round. Well, they cut so, off about halfway through. It looks like they just copy pasted the first two sets. Yeah, this is really this is a weird slide. So, but you're not alone, Matthew, because if you watch if you would watch the video, you would notice Raja saying that. He had to ask many times how, how many pluses are in whichever architecture that they were talking about. So <laughs> Wait, he was even not... confused. That. He was probably is... having a joke on he that one. He say it. Oh, my God. Yep. And well, that's why they said that they would. Uh, oh they are moving away from this nomenclature. Well, let's hope that XE uses better anti-aliasing than is used on this slide. But well, let's, <laughs> let's get to... Uh, Let's get to their new nomenclature, which is even worse, arguably. On slide 25, you can see that instead of 10 nanometer plus or 10 nanometer plus plus, which was uh, their original names, now they're calling it 10 nanometer super fin because they've done something with the fin fets. I don't know the technical details. And apparently it's super. It's just super now. Well, it's short for super capacitor. Yeah, but this is, this seems like an NVIDIA thing. This is just marketing. It's probably how they fix the 10 nanometer to get it to actually Don't provide the performance. Don't say fix. Oh, they, it, they it was intended all it. along. Is that what you're trying to say? That's actually surprising that they actually like managed to like make it like kind of sort of acceptable. But now it's only a mediocre node. Because <laughs> all the info we have, everything we've heard is that now it's okay. It's not the dumpster fire was before. They they put out the dumpster fire and they salvaged something out of it. They just moved the dumpster fire down to seven nanometer. Yeah, and that was interesting because we were all expecting them to focus solely on seven nanometer. So I guess they had some kind of unexpected breakthrough on ten nanometer. Because I can't imagine that they were actually investing in it. They're not building any more fabs. They're not really increasing capacity, are they? They're probably just trying to make their existing investment pay off. Yep. Anyway, so improved 10 nanometer, and what that gets us on slide 63 is a CPU that can boost to what appears to be 4.7 gigahertz. That's what it seems to imply with Tiger Lake. Though, of course... Maybe they're trying to imply 5 gigahertz like that AMD no. slide that everyone threw a fit about? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that was an ad, not a slide. Yeah. Thankfully, it was only an ad, but this seems to say 4.7, uh, which I don't... I don't think anybody had like a leak about that or something. Oh no, wait, no, we've seen Rogue Game leak some SKUs that said 4.7. So yeah, so Rogue Game leaked the 4.7, I think. And now this slide definitely confirms it. So so that's very interesting. But I have a feeling there's going to be a new boost algorithm with this 4.7. I don't think it's going to be like the traditional boost algorithm. So I can't imagine them getting 4.7 even with a significant improvement to uh, 10 nanometer. Of course, they could also be bending more. If the yields have improved, then they can bend more. So that's, that's there. there's that too. I don't know. It almost looks like they're trying to suggest it goes all the way up to five. No, I don't think so. Just based on the height. Oh, the curve. The curve. No, looks like five. that that definitely looks like 4.7. Oh, 4.7. Oh, would wait, no. Be oh, about that's, halfway oh, that's, up. oh, that's incrementing by 0. 0.5. Uh, 0. Oh, 0. I thought it was incrementing by 0. 0.2. I'm illiterate. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess that I guess that is five gigahertz then. It, it looks like they're shooting for that magic five gigahertz number. But there's and no way. It, there's no way they can do that, right? But look at the voltage that they have to yeah. go to. I mean, you notice how it slides way over from Sunny Cove to get that extra speed. Huh. This seems unlikely. But you can also see that the voltage has increased too. So it, it yeah. the range is also way way larger. So I mean, it can undervolt a lot further. So its idle is going to be better. But what mm -hmm. the point is that is that it's going to consume more power. It's not like oh they're getting like a whole extra gigahertz at the same power. No, it's it's coming at a what looks to be a substantial increase in power to get that five gigahertz. Yeah, and if you notice, they have to do all of that extra power to go from four gigahertz up to five. Yeah. It's normal that when you're pushing the frequencies so high, at the, the the growth is not linear anymore. So you have to really push your your power consumption to reach those frequencies. So yeah, diminishing returns. It's, it's just the law of physics. It's they can't mm -hmm. go around that. Uh, and speaking of Tiger Lake, we have something. Th th this is a leak, but this is from a news source, so don't take it like super seriously. We've looked at this, and we are we think this is feasible. But again, we're not saying like, oh, this is for certain going to happen. Grain of yeah. salt time here. Yeah, it, this is a drive-by transmission from a brand new email yeah. kind of stuff. So it could very well be fake. So this, so Tiger Lake supports both DDR4 and DDR5. And, it, and normally it's up to 5200 megahertz DDR5. But apparently a license is required to unlock support for 6,000 megahertz, which sounds like some kind of weird DLC thing. Yeah, and they actually cite Intel TDDRK Max. That sounds like a register or some kind of like value that that'll switch. It sounds like some CPU value in the BIOS. Yeah, and then also apparently it's a 15% performance increase going from DDR4 to DDR5. We don't know. And a max of eight banks of eight gigabyte or bit dims. Gigabyte. Gigabytes. Giga it's, gigabit. Bits yeah. is for transmission. Yeah. Uh, XMP support is apparently removed, which I guess makes sense because, well, it's not going in the desktop. There's no point for XMP in laptops. Exactly. And then this, this is probably the most interesting part. It contains a blacklist of PCIe devices. It will not boot if one is found. <laughs> I'm not really sure what the point of that is. Uh, I honestly can't. If this is true, I can't imagine what they'd want to blacklist. Like they can't. They can't blacklist like Nvidia and AMD GPUs, right? That'd be kind of stupid. Well, that would definitely be Tiger a little uh, anti-competitive. Yeah, and also it's Tiger like you. There's not. It's probably not going to be paired with a discrete GPU. Yeah, I mean, unless it's NFL. they might be thinking of putting it in some kind of nuke or something like that. Or a, a nuck if you're a normal person. A nuck. That's, that's nuk. the official pronunciation. Okay. You know, they could probably put this in a nuke. It's pretty close. It would probably be warm enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is more efficient, though, and we have to give them credit for that. Yeah. They just, they just needed to up the voltage quite a bit to get the 5 gigahertz. Anyways... So that's that leak. Grain of salt, remember. Anyways, moving on to slide 76. We have new roadmap. Alder Lake with the uh, hybrid architecture is confirmed. That is, uh, that's basically what we expected. Uh, I don't know if they uh, confirmed the core counts, but it should be eight Golden Cove cores and uh, eight Atom cores. And my speculation on this uh, we know it's a, a laptop and a desktop part, but I strongly suspect that if they were ever planning on putting this on the desktop, it wasn't going to be a flagship part because those Atom cores on the desktop are going to be almost dead weight. It's different in the laptop because you have a very small amount of power to work with in a laptop. You might only have like at most like 90 watts. And that is like an extreme amount for a laptop. Normally, you might have like 45 watts for a high-end CPU, maybe a little more. Uh, but in the desktop, you will have like 90 watts is kind of like the minimum in some cases. 
Like at the very, very least, like think about like the 2600, the 1600, the 3600. Those are 65 watt CPUs. Those are low end CPUs, and they're way, they're rated higher than almost all high end laptop CPUs. How fast do you think eight Atom cores at full throttle will be compared to any amount of Golden Cove cores? I'd be surprised if those eight Atom cores at full throttle could match two Golden Cove cores. I'd be surprised if they could. Depends on what they're trying to compute. Yeah, it does. I also don't see the hybrids on the desktop. I no, it will happen. It. it will happen. We've seen the documents. It will happen, but I guarantee you that was not Intel's plan. But what's the mark? What's the market for it? I would think that they're going to do it for the salvage dies, where the atom cores are yeah. pretty much dead weight yeah. or, or just bad. Like if they have to cut them off. We have a lot of known SKUs. We don't know if they're going to be act- made into actual like products, but we have like a bunch of like six cores with no atom cores. I think we have eight cores with no atom cores. Uh, stuff like that. It's just inconceivable to me that Intel would be so out of touch to possibly believe that they could beat AMD with an 8-core CPU. This is basically an 8-core CPU. Those eight other Atom cores aren't going to help. It's It would lose against uh, the 3950X by a mile. There's some things that they were showing off, what, four years ago now, three years, where they would have active screens on the exterior of laptops and such that would continuously check your Facebook or things like that and provide a small touchscreen interface to those simple things using widgets in Windows 8, I think it was. And so I could see them maybe using some of these Atom cores in that regard just to check your email, that kind of stuff, where you don't have to actually open your laptop. And they might make a comeback in those multi-screen laptops again. Oh, on the laptop, I'm sure Alder, Alder Lake will be at least passable. The hybrid design is pretty nice for mobile devices, uh, if they can pull it off in Windows. The idea of this to be on desktop, it's like... Yeah, who's going to care? Who's going to care about saving a little bit of power by using weak Atom cores instead of just an underclock normal core. Exactly. So I really don't see that. I don't know. You mentioned you saw some documents, and I don't know what documents you've seen, but uh, I I will be very surprised to see this, and I'm actually thinking that it might be either a big mistake somewhere <laughs> or, or one of those things that will just... It's a big fuss. They make an announcement for it just because they have nothing else to talk about, and they just silently drop it and realize that there is no market for this. Could be paper launch, yeah, because it is yeah. 10 nanometer, and the yields are still, I'm sure, not very good. Uh, so for laptops, it makes sense. For yeah. Notebooks, tablets, stuff like. Yeah. That. I don't know tablets because if, they're usually ARM, but. Uh, if this was a true desktop CPU, they wouldn't have Atom cores. It would be at least 10 Golden Cove cores instead. It, it would probably be even 12. But of course, we'll never know because I'm sure they canceled, like they canceled Ice Lake, uh, Ice Lake. Uh, S, they canceled Tiger Lake S. Uh, this Alder Lake S, I don't know if this was the, the original idea for it, but they could have canceled Alder Lake S and renamed it because it's back on the desktop. Who knows? Mm. All I know is that they there are no 10 nanometer desktop CPUs that exist. Well, this could have also been a way to help salvage 10 nanometer in the event that the super fins didn't work out for them because then they can, at will, disable pairs of CPU cores in either the performance or the low performance cores and hodgepodge something together to give them some new performance and additional cores. Yeah. So this could have been their original salvage attempt where they're like, oh, well, we can just do this and mix and match and use it for mobile and desktop if we get better yields on the desktop cores versus the mobile cores. Yeah. And then the super fins allowed them to actually make real CPUs for desktop. And so they just brought this forward anyway. Yeah, but they clearly they clearly didn't anticipate that. If they if they've actually fixed it, which they haven't, I doubt they even care about desktop at this point. This might this might mark a, a permanent change to their CPUs, uh, because they just they just don't care about desktop anymore. Well, we know that everyone's been talking about the great desktop decline, like yeah, how desktop sales had been going down and down and down for years now and laptops and mobile devices have been making a strong surge in yeah. so much that even businesses are starting to hand out laptops instead of desktops to employees. Yep. I know that it's a trend that I've been seeing at my work 
where a lot Same more here. of the lighter weight users. So think like accounting and managers, those kinds of things where they would like access to their stuff at home as well as at work. They get a laptop instead of an actual desktop PC. Okay, uh, let's move on to slide 121. So, so the, the 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 main thing here is like you see like XCLP and Tiger Lake. We already knew that DG1. We already knew that, but SG1, an Intel server GPU, which uh, video cards had leaked a few days ago. Presumably, they had the slide deck. And if you'll recall, in my Intel graphics leak from uh, the first of this month, I specifically said Intel was going to make uh, the streaming data center GPUs. Uh, based on the DG1 silicon, and this is exactly uh, what has happened. And SG1 should be pretty much the same as DG1, uh, at least the actual die. And I and somewhere in here, or I don't know if it's in this uh, PowerPoint presentation or whatever, but they they talked specifically about streaming videos and like cloud gaming uh, as a use case for this SG1, which is exactly what I said. So. I'm just saying, may, maybe it was a, maybe I guessed I could have, but but I that's a pretty good guess if it is pretty on the point guess. <laughs> yeah, super on point. Uh, let's see, 124. Now this is interesting because we can see their XEHP GPU here. This is Arctic Sound, but they don't call it Arctic Sound, which is interesting. So they have a, they have basically announced it. They've almost announced it. They don't give specs, but they're talking about it. They're showing it, literally. And they've, they've also shown it in the lab. So it's interesting to me that they have not announced Arctic Sound yet. Though apparently this is a 2021 product. Uh, my expectations for how soon this would be coming out might have been uh, really high. So I thought it was coming out this year. And that, that, that was my personal opinion. That wasn't like something someone told me that. I was just thinking it's in the lab. They're showing it off. Uh, Kaduri's like tweeting about it and it's like they haven't announced it yet that's kind of weird well how long was he showing off like Vega before it actually came out uh like half a year yeah so yeah okay so let's give it let's give it like four more months Mm -hmm. three four more months sounds good I would expect Uh, early next year yeah so oh by the way the other part of that uh, SG1 thing I didn't have the uh, and I didn't have the name of it by the way. That's why it's not in the article. That's why I call it DG1 in server form. The 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 plan that I was told is that Intel would be branding SG1 and Arctic Sound under the same family to make it seem like uh, the XEHP part was actually selling. Uh, I don't know if they're still going to be doing this. They might have gotten cold feet after I preemptively called them out, or or maybe they don't care. Either way. We don't know yet. But this is Arctic Sound. That's the point. All right. 126. And this is their gaming uh, arc. So I was under the impression that XEHP would also be like the gaming GPUs. Because if you look on uh, 125, you kind of see like how HP is like that enthusiast mid-range segment. Uh, but apparently they're making a new thing called XEHPG for high performance gaming. Yeah, this won't get confusing at all. Trust yeah. me. I'm not sure if this is just <laughs> marketing or if there is actually an architectural difference because we have like device IDs for architectures. We have like we have Gen 12, and uh, and then we also have Gen 12.5 and Gen 12.8, and it's like for a bunch of different things like Arctic Sound, DG2, DG1, Tiger Lake, etc. It's also really confusing how they're calling all this Gen 12 when it's all when all of these GPUs are very very different. Though maybe a better slide to look at would be 128. I think it presents it a bit more clear. 28. Kind of the same. That, that this this is ju- this is just what they showed last year with HPG under HP. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't help that much. Thanks Intel. Very clear. And then uh, slide 129. Uh, this is like the overview of all of the GPUs. So we have HPC Ponte Vecchio, where uh, we have a, a bunch of like components there because it's the Favaros EMIB uh, packaging style. So we can see, I think 
I don't know what actually the base tile is. Is that like an act? Is that like a silicon interposer or something? Anyways, that that's being made at 10 nanometer Intel. Then that Rambo cache is also Intel 10 nanometer. And then the compute tile says it's going to be both Intel and external. And I assume that means uh, 7 nanometer Intel. But they say next gen. And then the external is probably going to be like TSMC 7 nanometer, 6 nanometer, 5 nanometer. Those something 160,000 like chips that it ordered. Uh, I mean, who knows what that is? I, I, this Ponte Vecchio is a long ways out. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. And then for the I.O. tile, it's only external. So maybe that's like TSMC 16 nanometer, 20 nanometer. I don't imagine they'd use 7 nanometer for just I.O. Yeah, the I.O. tile, they'll probably do a, a cheaper, like you said, 20, 22 nanometer range. And then we have HP, and it says TBA for architecture, but this is Arctic Sound. EMIB, it's a four, it, it will, it'll come in variants of one, two, or four tiles. And that is on 10 nanometer enhanced super thin. And then we have HPG. This is DG2, but it says TV announce. Uh, and then standard packaging, which means I, presumably that means either it's a single die or it has multiple dies, but they're not connected by EMIB for some reason. I assume it's just one die. This explicitly says external, which if you'll recall earlier this year, like in January, I said they'd be making DG2 at TSMC, probably on the 7 nanometer node. Though I think there was a leak that said 6 nanometer. 7 nanometer and 6 nanometer are like compatible on some level, I believe. But does I, TSMC has the spare capacity on the 7 nanometer node for this? Are they going to be making many of these GPUs? Probably not. Oh, so people are moving off of 7 nanometer. By the time this launches in probably 2021, uh, AMD will be moving to 5 nanometer. Apple, Qualcomm, they'll all be on 10 nanometer. Uh, sorry, yeah, 5 nanometer, not 10 nanometer. Like, 7 nanometer in uh, 2021 is going to be fairly free. And then, of course, we have SG-1, DG-1, Tiger Lake on 10 nanometer super thin. Not enhanced super thin and not enhanced nope. refined super thin TI. Super thin. <laughs> super, super thin. Yeah, I, they yeah, might maybe. be getting rid of the plus, plus, plus thing and going with just yeah. adjectives. Super, even super, so super. Something <laughs> even worse than the plus. Long adjectives. <laughs> Super awesome, magnificent. <laughs> Super ten thin, nanometer, the magnificent. Enhanced. Plus. <laughs> all right, now let's skip all the way to the end, or almost all the way to the end. We're just gonna look at a few more slides. Two hundred ten. Uh, this is just their C data center CPU roadmap. We have Isolate coming in uh, the second half of this year, as we expected. And no, then there's PCI also Sapphire Gen Rapids. Four. Sapphire Rapids in twenty twenty one. Gen five. Yeah, DDR5, Gen 5. Uh, this is, I believe, Sapphire Rapids is Golden Cove. I think that's what the leaks say. And also, uh, no mention of uh, 7 nanometer on this. Oh, and it can't even be 7 nanometer because it's coming out in 2021. Mm -hmm. So Sapphire Rapids is uh, 10 nanometer. And something interesting I remember Jim saying is that someone told him it was just two ice lakes slapped together. I don't know how true that is, but uh, we'll see, I guess. It's interesting that this supports DDR5 and Ice Lake does not. So then, so what Jim uh, was told might not have been uh, totally correct, but I imagine this will be somewhat similar to Ice Lake. But check it out. Intel is going, they are going to have in 2020 second half PCA Gen 4 and then immediately in 21 Gen 5. Mm -hmm. So for them, Gen 4 is like a... Or speed Stepping bump. Stepping stone. <laughs> yeah, speed bump. I mean, who knows if you'll even be able to buy Ice Lake. Yeah, it definitely suggests that they will probably have Gen 4 on desktop platforms, either next gen. And then that's for servers. Or early yeah. next year. Sapphire Rapid, it's true. But they're definitely not going to have Gen 5 on the desktops next year. No. Yeah. Uh, even with AMD, they're talking about only having Gen 5 in servers at first. So going back wow. to like the Golden Cove core thing, we might be expecting a significant uh, IPC increase there, but uh, I don't even think the leaks have anything for us there at the moment. Yeah, but coming to this Gen 4, Gen 5 on the PCIe side, I think that would be a, I mean, let's face it, we are not able to saturate Gen 4 in our desktops now. Not, we not have yet. to run simulated yeah. benchmarks against yeah. Gen 4 PCIe devices. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, so this roadmap actually gives me an interesting idea. Since Alder Lake is Golden Cove, uh, I guess we can expect PCIe 5 and DDR5 for that chipset. The uh, I guess like the 600 series Intel. I mean, if it's the same core, it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we know we know that Alder Lake uh, on the desktop is a new socket LGA 1700. So that is a chance to update the lane specification and the uh, RAM specification. Just speculation though. Anyways, slide 213. Uh, this was the, just like they're uh, they're basically showing their chiplets uh, roadmap. Are oh, you mean glued on? Uh, Sorry, gl uh, their glue processor. roadmap. Yeah. Well, according to their own terminology, yes, they're glued together. Glued together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glued yeah together. multiple. Yeah, multiple dies. Yeah, that's literally glued together. Come on, Intel. <laughs> now we are being mean. And now they're <laughs> now they're finally admitting that monolithic is pretty bad unless you're doing something like mobile. Oh, and speaking of that, what do you think Alder Lake is going to look like? Do you think it's going to be monolithic, or do you think it's going to be uh, chiplets or multiple dies? But weren't they on different? Uh, were the atom cores and the uh, what was called the Golden Cove? Were they on the same node, or were they on different nodes? I they should know. be on the same node. I don't know if Intel has disclosed that, but they should. They should be both ten nanometer. Because okay. it's because uh, the rumor is Gracemont and uh, uh, Golden Cove, but so but Intel's work? not Intel's not disclosed anything, as far as I know, that would tell us if it's monolithic, multiple dies, or individual IPs. I would think that they would be smart if they did make it two different dies, but I would don't they, see though? them doing it. For for mobile, AMD has made the case that monolithic is the best thing to do because of power. Yes. I don't see them doing it for Alder Lake, even though it's got the you know atom cores and desktop cores. Yeah, I, I think they're think doing they it in one go for that. I think it'll be their last monolithic, though. But it should it should be noted that Rocket Lake is not monolithic. Mm -hmm. There's at least there's at least two dies on Rocket Lake, and Alder Lake is coming after. So there is the possibility that it could be uh, multi die. Uh, anyways. That this let's just go to the last slide that I wanted to look at. This one is just because out of context it looks really stupid. And in context it, it might also be kind of stupid. How can we improve <laughs> compute efficiency by one hundred or one thousand times? According to AMD, you just have to define what compute efficiency is, right? Yeah. Or <laughs> you can think differently. Yeah, think differently is, by changing funny, what it's based off of. <laughs> That's a funny uh, thing to say, given that Apple just dumped Intel. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I just thought when I was skimming through the slide deck and I came upon this slide, I was like, what the hell does this mean? Switch well, speaking of Speaking of, <laughs> what, it might very well be that Apple might have to come back with the tails between the legs because of uh, the whole NVIDIA debacle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were going to talk about that, but then we decided that nothing's changed. Yeah. Uh, I still don't think they're going to buy ARM. I think they're buying something. I don't think it's going to be ARM, though. Yeah, there's a lot of talk that they are uh, been courting ARM for a little while, as well as a few other companies as well. I mean, I'm sure they're talking to ARM. I don't think they're talking to them to buy ARM. That seems like a little bit of a leap. But why would you think that they are after? <laughs> well, I think Moore's Law actually has a opinion on that. Uh, oh, he he said he was he said that he was told that Intel was going to buy uh, an ARM based company. I think I think he said Nuvia. Oh yeah, you're right. I do remember. If, if yeah, he was talking about how that would be a good step in order for them to yeah. Okay. Though I don't, though I don't. And this is kind of on a tangent because we we're just talking about Nvidia. Uh, I don't think Intel is going to buy Nuvia. Maybe uh, Nvidia is trying to buy Nuvia or something, or they're going to buy some other ARM based company. Because if they are actually going to ARM, there's no way they're buying ARM. That's the I mean, hassle that NVIDIA doesn't want to have to deal with. I mean, you saw what happened when they did Tegra, so... Well, imagine the litigation. Like, holy hell, who would want to deal with that? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, obviously Intel's proven that they can do a few things strong-handedly and still come out on top. Okay, well, anyways, that was it for that slide deck. Uh, it is 233 slides long. If you are... A technophile, this is a treasure trove for you, unless you uh, unless you don't like to cringe, because I'm sure there's quite a bit of like, oh, that's bad in yeah. here. Dr. Ian, we're talking about you, yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to uh, the uh, Ampere leak. Uh, this one's new. It's not. It's not. Well, I mean, like, it's not like. Oh my god, this is like a bunch of new information we've never seen before. But it's like, uh, it's another update. Uh, that's nice to see. Hold on a minute. My GP was just like gone up to like a hundred fan speed. <laughs> Stop your pawn. Is it AMD or mm-hmm. NVIDIA? I think it's AMD. AMD's like default driver for like the fan curve is horrible. Oh, this is your you laptop. Know? No, no, it's not. It's my desktop. No? Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's at 2500 RPM at 50 degrees Celsius. <laughs> it's like, it, it's just like as soon as it, it it's either zero or in the Max. thousands. Yeah. I, I forgot to open MSI Afterburner to get the fan curve under control. Anyways, so this leak, the important points is that this, uh, the, Rogue Game says this is a 3080. I don't know if that's true. Also, by the way, Micron confirmed it's 30 series. So I'm not sure what they're, what NVIDIA is doing with their 21 years, 21 days uh, marketing campaign. Yeah. This apparent uh, 3080 has a 2.1 gigahertz core clock limits. Uh, 19 gigabits per second GDDR6X, which Micron also confirmed because it's not JDEC. That's why it's not on JDEC. That's why we were confused when we were hearing the leaks about GDDR6X because Micron isn't going to JDEC t- to confirm it. They're just doing it on their own. Anyways, uh, 10 gigabytes VRAM, and uh, the score is really bad, but uh, that could be down to a variety of reasons. Yeah, and I think that he's saying it's a 3080 based on the device model. Yeah. The 10DE 1467. Because we got a few of those call-outs for the different models that they're coming out with. And they've been arbitrarily assigning based on what die they think it is. Uh, also, if, you, if you're curious about what like a 2080 Ti reports as, uh, it's pretty similar. Uh, the core clock limit is also the same for this particular average uh, 1080 Ti. Uh, so th- there doesn't seem to be like a reporting issue here going on. Yeah. So uh, we are looking at perhaps similar uh, clock speed to the current 20 series. And uh, if if you watch Jim's last video, uh, he said that he thinks this is going to be on Samsung's 5 nanometer node, which is something I agree with. I don't think they choose 8 nanometer. You know, quote unquote 7 nanometer, 5 nanometer. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so there's been a lot of people saying like oh but it doesn't work like that they can't just go from seven to five and, and samsung says it's ip compatible yes they would have to do some work to get like what they did on seven eight down to five but it's a lot better than going back to eight yeah and if they it, it, the thing is samsung it, it makes so much sense that nvidia and samsung will be like yeah let's do this on seven or five nanometer because think think about uh, if they decide to do an eight nanometer, the only thing Nvidia gains is margins. That's it. Eight nanometer is not much of an upgrade from TSMC twelve nanometer. And then uh, Samsung is out of a foundry partner that can test their EUV node. Because Qualcomm just uh, well they revoke the contract for their uh, upcoming chips on five nanometer. Yeah, but that kind of play a factor because. If the if Nvidia went for their five, it wasn't now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, yeah. I know. But that's that's why I'm saying it's like Samsung would never risk it. Samsung would never risk that. Risk losing Qualcomm. Yeah, if, if, I think that Qualcomm moving away, it's probably actually a proof that they have somebody yeah. else on that phone. Yeah, yeah. They they would give it to free to Qualcomm, and they're actually probably they're they're giving Nvidia. A hell of a discount, I imagine. Well, and uh, you got to think, what else is motivating Samsung to buy eighty percent of the EUV equipment? Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, out of all the EUV equipment that's sold, Samsung has eighty percent of it. They're obviously yeah. ramping for something, right? Yeah. So when you think about it, it's like it—it it, it just makes so much sense that Nvidia and Samsung would uh, team up and put a big GPU on an EUV node. Samsung's not buying all this EV equipment for nothing. Samsung definitely has a partner. If it's not Qualcomm, it has to be Nvidia. Well, and, and there's if, no way. Yeah. If what? they don't have anyone buying it, they're just losing money based on time, yeah. right? So yep. why not shove through some silicon that might actually pay off for somebody and at least recoup some of the costs, right? Yeah. So they could be selling to Nvidia at cost of operating plus a little margin just to pad the 
bank, right? But uh, they're probably giving NVIDIA a screaming deal because otherwise they're just losing more money on this process until they get everything pushed through. But here's the thing. They've also locked in NVIDIA for any future printing yeah, of the, the silicon yeah. until the end of the 3000 series. So if they fix if they fix the node, which apparently suffers from poor yields, then it, then it was a great deal. And then they might even get NVIDIA on the next gen three nanometer node. Or, yep. or four nanometer, which is an evolution of five. Uh, oh, and also, one of the other things I, I saw a lot of was like, well, NVIDIA would have to deal with the poor yields. That's not NVIDIA's thing. NVIDIA doesn't own any fabs. Samsung owns the fabs. Samsung has, yeah. Yeah, Samsung has exactly. to deal with the yields. NVIDIA doesn't care. Yeah, they ask for a number of working chips, and they get provided with a number of working chips. Yeah. You know, yeah. if they get less than that desired amount, there might be penalties towards Samsung or something like that, depending on what agreement they struck. Yep. But they now, don't just order X number of wafers and get whatever they get kind of thing. NVIDIA has been in this game for too long that it would make a bad deal here. So. And it's yeah. a really big risk too. But think of the payoff that it'll be if they get chips that can have good power efficiency so that they can push clocks or give better density and be able to get more performance by having more CUDA cores or I think whatever done, the new core is called. I think I think they've done more cores rather than uh, more clocks. I, I was very, I strongly believe for a while that they were going to try another Pascal, low core count, very, very high clock speed, but mm -hmm. maybe five nanometer just isn't capable of it. Yeah, I think they're awesome. adding more RT cores, things like that. Yeah. It, definitely more RT cores. But it's just like, if it really is eight nanometer, then I just can't imagine either NVIDIA or Samsung being happy with that. that, that that's the main thing. The worst case, it could be if there is like an 8 nanometer and then a super LAN is introduced six months later that is on fire. But that would be very, very weird. Well, here's the thing. If they weren't worried that AMD's RDNA 2 was viable, <laughs> like if they didn't worry about the performance of that and it was just going to be another mid-range piece of you know, 5,700 or something, then I could see them maybe feeling safe enough to go with eight nanometer. But we know that they've been scared of RDNA 2 for a little while, maybe not so much anymore. And so they probably aligned everything to push five. down to five nanometer and really come from behind. I think NVIDIA knew that risking, because they were on 16 nanometer for like, well, um, well four years now. Uh, and they knew that they needed a big jump just to make sure that they'd stay ahead. Because yeah. that seems to be NVIDIA's MO right now. Uh, they'll make a big jump every like uh, few years instead of uh, just being behind AMD and going at the same pace that they are, but being behind. Yeah, and imagine the bragging rights they'll have of not having just one or two, but three cards that just demolish even what AMD attempted to be a high-end card. Though I wouldn't count AMD out yet. I mean, I think I think RDNA two would be really fast. It's just that Ampere will be faster. So yeah, and I think they'll probably do some stuff with RDNA two that'll be kind of surprising. And besides, the thing is, is that AMD like the desktop graphics. It's it's not it's not as lucrative as it used to be. It's all about the data center. It's all about mobile. It's all about the consoles these days. Yeah, well, that's why AMD made their compute-oriented card that didn't have rasterization. Yeah. Is they know that that's data center, and whatever we end up with the desktop is going to be remnants from the consoles and the technology they've been pushing in console, just scaled up for desktop. So our final topic is this uh, press release from Nuvia. They have announced their CPU core called Phoenix, and uh, apparently they're saying that's going to be like really, really fast. And the, like the game they're talking here is uh, quite impressive to me, though I'm not sure if they'll be able to meet expectations. Because you can see from this graph that uh, like they are promising almost up to like twice the speed of the uh, fastest ARM CPU, the uh, A13 Lightning from Apple. And at the very least, it'll be like, what? How much is this? Uh, I mean, this is like 1,300 versus uh, 1,600 points in Geekbench 5 single thread. That's a substantial lead. 
I mean, they got this big circle where they expect it yeah. to land, and it's you know over two thousand points in some estimate here. Yeah. But even if it lands right in the dead center here, that's 1,800 at a lower what, idle normalized power in watts than the Apple A13 Lightning. So that, that's pretty significant. If they manage to actually pull it off, that'll be a pretty good leap forward. But it should be pointed out that this is the core. This is the... This- the, the power of the cores. They're not counting IO or other things in this. Mm-hmm. And they are saying this applies to the server because this only talks about the core counts. But you have to understand that mobile CPUs and server CPUs are very different. Even if they have the same cores, they're going to have a lot of different IOs and features. Yeah. Uh, so, so at the very least, this could be a very good mobile CPU. Nuvia seems to be more focused on uh, like server CPUs. But we'll just have to wait and see because this is like presumably... 18 months out somewhere around there because that because they said that they said that within the next 18 months we understand that our competition will have released faster cpus i mean to me that says phoenix is also coming out within the next 18 months and they also throw a lot of shade at amd and intel Like, like this quote our solution does not need to add extraneous cores to try and make up for a single threaded performance deficit there would be no need to employ marketing inflated boost clocks that are not achievable in any real world applications. Which is exactly what I've been saying about Intel's boost clocks as well as AMD's to some degree yeah. is they market these boost clocks that can only be sustained for, you know, 10 seconds and then it down clocks itself. Or, or milliseconds even. Or even milliseconds. Of, yeah. In the case of AMD, like a hundred or so milliseconds. Yeah, everyone remembers the... Uh, 4.7, 4.6 kind of debacle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were off by 0.25. Oh, no. <laughs> so All uh, by the time by the time Phoenix launches, I'm expecting like maybe like an early 2020 launch. launch early 2021 launch. The AMD is going to have Zen fast. 3. Yeah. AMD is going to have Zen 3. Intel is going to be on 14 nanometer. I mean, I don't expect 10 nanometer desktop CPUs to be in, sorry, not desktop, but data center CPUs to be in much supply. Uh, of course, there will be mobile. And then there will be the ARM, other ARM CPUs from other people like Apple, Qualcomm, Samsung. I mean, Nubia is uh, a startup. They're talking a big game, but maybe they can pull this off because they're starting from scratch. Yeah, they don't have a lot of backwards compatibility to have to drag along like a boat anchor. Yeah. Yeah, they they're not uh, they're not writing on an, an extraction set that was uh, created like decades ago. That you know when the people were making that that is uh, x86, like they didn't know it was going to be used for decades. They didn't know their janky uh, creation would be like the basis for like almost the entire world of computing, full minus mobile. I do have one point of correction to make from the previous podcast. It, John Masters has said in our last podcast, I had said Spectre lets people dump RAM. And that, of course, is true in some cases with Meltdown, he says. And he's realizing there's some simplification. And yeah, it, it was an oversimplification. It doesn't allow you to dump RAM with Spectre vulnerabilities. The Spectre V2 patch, if it isn't applied, still makes Meltdown viable. And so those abilities to dump are still in a potential vector. But what I meant by dump RAM, it's commonly associated as in just dumping all of system RAM to a file kind of thing where you get 16 gig, 8 gig, whatever. In this case, I was meaning more targeted dumps. So if you have a session key or a encryption key for, say, key pass, things like that, those could be determined and dumped. Just those one few select things, not dumping the whole system RAM. So there, there is that little correction there. As you're dumping it, as it passes through the CPU, not directly from RAM. Anyways, uh, that is it for the news. Let's move on to questions. Q&A. We have a lot of questions. We can't yeah. answer all of them, unfortunately. Go ahead and pull up best. your selection of the ones you want to hit on then, Matthew. AMD is getting... Oh, from Amiable Chief, AMD is getting ready to reestablish itself as a serious contender at the top end of the GPU market with RDNA 2. Not only are they looking to challenge the performance crown, but also looking to catch up to buzzword features like ray tracing. Do you have any insight that you can share about what resources the company is putting into ensuring 
driver quality to prevent a repeat of the early Navi driver debacles. With our DNA possibly sharing its DNA with consoles, can we assume that driver quality would generally be far better going forward by benefiting from shared code base? Uh, I don't believe what the consoles use in code and software has any bearing for what AMD puts in the drivers. I'm pretty sure those are two very different things. I mean, if they figure out some kind of sneaky efficiency gain in the console drivers, they might port that over to PC in some way, shape, or form. But yeah, I, yeah, but I don't are... think the code base is close enough that they can really share a whole lot. Like AMD's not giving Microsoft and Sony drivers; they make their own. Like the, that's as far as I know, that, that that that's how it should work because it's a uh, semi-custom. It's made specifically for them. Yeah, they might have some kind of co-development thing going on. I'm sure they do, but it's going to be... AMD's going to be there for assistance, not main development. Uh, let's see. Uh, but those buzz buzzword features, ray tracing, we know about that. They've AMD's also been doing stuff like AIM, uh, like uh, Radeon image sharpening and uh, the anti-lag stuff. So they're definitely doing like a tit-for-tat thing with uh, NVIDIA in terms of features. Well, once DLSS... 3.0 comes out, I think they'll once again be behind in that regard. Yeah. But I th I think we're going to see a lot of like the DLS 3.0 coming into the marketing world and fighting because of maybe some lack of full true 4K on one or both consoles. Speaking of that kind of stuff, this generation, I still don't think DLSS and ray tracing or whatever equivalents AMD has of that. Mm -hmm. I don't think they will matter this generation still. I think they definitely will next generation. They definitely will. That, that'll probably be the first generation where that stuff seriously matters to most people. This generation... You mean the one that will come in five to seven years? No. <laughs> no, the one that will come in like two years. Yeah, the, the, mid, of what? the mid generation bump that they do. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I think our DNA 3 and whatever the NVIDIA competitor will be, I think that'll be the generation where these uh, buzzword features will actually stop being buzzwords and will be like serious features. Yeah. I still don't think there's enough games uh, that will really uh, make people want to like be like, oh, I want to get a GPU specifically for ray tracing. Or like, if this GPU doesn't have ray tracing, then I'm buying myself into a dead end. I don't think that's happened yet, but I think it will next generation. I don't. I don't. I, uh, yeah, I agree with you here, Matthew. Uh, I also don't see the titles being so so deep into the pure DXR so yet, so that they make any. Because you know, we will end up in the same problem. We buy the hardware; we it just sits there unused. Because yeah. So it, this has to go hand in hand with the software with the game developers so yeah and the consoles the consoles are coming out this year they're already developing games for those consoles uh and then the next two to three years we'll probably see a glut of uh pc titles that have utilized uh ray tracing and other technologies so that'll be perfect for uh like fi finally making that uh pc hardware useful for the masses i i guess it depends ray tracing in the console so let's just call it dxr because that's what it's going to be right yeah if because ray tracing is nvidia who cares <laughs> dxr let's use the real terms here if they use dxr in consoles to improve performance then i think we will actually see more ray tracing in games that get ported over from the consoles because if it is like amd says a zero or low impact to add the ray tracing or it even gives them the ability to do ray tracing and then get some better frames who knows we might actually see a lot of games start to incorporate that ray tracing yeah. the dxr I keep saying it nvidia's marketing is really good but no 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 a ray tracing is not nvidia rtx is nvidia's trademark yeah yeah that's, that's true that. ray that's is true fine. so yeah, as long as i'm not saying rtx <laughs> so dxr you see what nvidia managed to do yeah, they made, made it synonymous. Yeah, it's yeah, they made it's terrible. Equal. It's, not, it's terrible. Yeah, it, so it's just is fine. it's just their marketing. They have been hitting it's it really good. hard. All right, next question from Tara. Kirk anime body pillow. When? Like the fireman one they were asking about, or was that Carbon Cry? Uh, that's the next question. Both. Kirk, <laughs> the sexy fireman, limited edition body pillow. When? Uh, when I can talk my wife into 
drawing her dreams, I guess. Maybe, oh, yeah, maybe by the way, it. Kirk, I hate you for changing your picture on here. I absolutely uh, hate you. you. You know I did it just to screw with you, right? Yeah, I know. I know. I hate you for uh, it. My wife got a yours. laugh out of it. She's like, yeah, I could do that. And so she made it just to make Carbon cry happy, I guess. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to screw with Aunt Matthew on this one. So... <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe next I'll do question. the sexy fireman one, or maybe she'll do next it question. Just to have some fun. Next question. <laughs> World Town FC from YouTube. Do you think AMD will ever shift some production uh, production of lower end CPUs, GPUs to Samsung to relieve supply constraints with TSMC and Global Foundries uh, with Xbox, PlayStation, Zen three? Navi 2X chips coming from TSMC. A uh, AMD should diversify their supply. Uh, I I mean, it could happen. But uh, what AMD said about their Ren Mars shortage was, was that they hadn't ordered enough. Not yeah. that TSMC couldn't supply enough, but they hadn't ordered enough. Which I think, I think AMD is like being intentionally cautious. Well, you got to think of what they've dealt with in the past where they haven't yeah. had a lot of mobile wins. And even when they did get mobile wins, it, those it, producers didn't really push those laptops. But now, since all of those uh, ad hoc ones, you know, the Asus and the ROG, they're all gaining such traction and such demand that people like HP and Dell are jumping on board and trying to get theirs out quicker or maybe make a few more models or come back to AMD saying, yeah, we want some more of these chips. Not to mention uh, some of the makers that are actually going and making the the NUC alikes. You know, AS Rock is coming out with their little ultra small form factor kind of box as well you know, with a Renoir in it. Also, uh, Lisa Sue, like almost as soon as she became CEO, she had to deal with like, do you remember with like that they made way too many 200 series GPUs and like uh, they basically had to write it off? Yeah. Remember that? That was right. That was right at the beginning of uh, Lisa Sue's uh, tenure CEO, and I imagine that she has uh, very strong feelings about being ambitious with production. This probably is the reason why I was a bit circumspect when when there was this uh, question that the external part on the Intel side would be TSMC on the seven nanometer because there are the consoles, the mobile laptops, well the mobile chips. Still, the Zen two is out there. They still have probably to supply lots of roams so i don't know if amd can move so fast to five nanometers so uh, i think that the smc will be busy especially if amd seems to be successful they i don't know how much capacity there will be there for intel i think they're moving the five nanometer in 2021 but i think that's only for data center yeah i think so i think there will I, still be zen 3 on the desktop probably on on seven nanometer p yeah or whatever it's called. and yeah. mobile i think mobile too so it might. I don't know how much capacity TSMC will build. Mean TSMC is also see. increasing capacity too. Yeah, they're like talking TSMC, about building the new five nanometer in Arizona. They, they're not. They're not uh, yeah. ignorant about all the demand. They're they're planning for the future. Well, okay, let's hope so. Yeah, so let's well, see. next also, question. Uh, oh wait, no, Kurt, one, do you have more to say? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say uh, AMD has some of that co supply constraint. I think we should expect some supply constraint from NVIDIA on 5 nanometer if that's the yeah. direction they're going. And so we're probably going to see more of a paper launch with a slow rollout. The video cards are going to be sold out for the first few months like we did with the 2000 series. Actually, those weren't terribly bad. But still, yeah. I would expect to say if you want to buy one at a reasonable price and it's not pre-ordered, then you're going to have to wait a couple months. And I wouldn't pre-order one anyway because they're still going to be an atrocious price. Though, yeah, I think they, they will control it that way. They will just price them so much that the demand won't outstrip it too much. Yep. And then they'll be we'll able to everything. make money back on the high cost of the process. I think it makes sense that NVIDIA could have a shortage because although NVIDIA does not have to deal with poor yields, if the yield, and even though NVIDIA is like, probably their only major foundry partner uh if the yields are bad enough to bring down supply there's nothing nvidia can really do about that except for price their stuff higher so yeah yeah of course the people who really want it will get it and they can make an extra premium on it and since i think ampere is going to be faster than amd they can afford that yeah anyways next question 
Okay, I've got a simple question. This is from SMCKBK. What do you think will come first? Intel 7 nanometer or my mustache? Well, that's only your answer then. I do technically, uh, I mean, I kind of have a mustache. It's like my facial hair will grow out like a centimeter and then just immediately stop. Well, it may feel like it stops, but hair continues to grow regardless. I have not shaved my mustache in like, I don't know, like a year or two. It hasn't really grown that much. You've probably had hairs falling out then. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. you get enough turnover on your face. <laughs> maybe you sleep with your face in the pillow. You should try learning spe- uh, sleeping on your back or something. Perhaps. No, absolutely not. We talked about that last time. If you yeah. sleep on your back, you're pretty weird. Yeah, let's not talk about being face down in a pillow. Uh, oh, Kurt, <laughs> come on. You can't get right, away moving with on, moving No, on. I, I just okay. want to say one thing. I don't care that much about my facial hair. But so, still, what do you think? So, as you are the expert in your own. Oh, what do hair, I? What oh, do you think? Seven, oh, yeah, right. That's I have the an, question. I haven't an answered the question. Seven nanometers. Yeah. So, so by so we're saying, by what was it like 2023, 2022, 2023? Will I have like an actually fully grown out mustache, or will seven nanometer finally come to market? That's a good question. If I don't, if I don't touch my mustache for another two to three years, will it actually grow that much? Uh, How about this? Let's have a dare. Ooh, if Intel comes, comes out with seven nanometer on time, then you have to shave whatever mustache you may have grown. No, <laughs> it takes to grow back. All that effort, all that effort, no. years and years, and you have to shave it if they come out no, on time. No, absolutely not. Come on, it's like a solid deal. You got like a ninety percent chance of being able to keep your mustache. No. <laughs> what if Intel is suddenly really competent? Then you lose a mustache. It's, it's yeah, a good I'm not, deal. I'm not, I'm not betting on that. Imagine I'm not Bob betting Swain. on the situation I can't control. Imagine Bob Sweeney. What's his name? The CEO of Intel. Swan? Bob Swan. Did you almost say Bob Sweeney? Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> I was about <laughs> to say Sweeney. So imagine Bob Swan in 2023 launching the 7 nanometer and finally turning to the camera and saying, Matthew, now you can shave your mustache. <laughs> Isn't that worth it? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> those, maybe they'd be trying to pay you back me. for the Arctic Sound thing. I don't know. Is Bob Swan specifically called me out because we recorded a podcast in 2020? I'd be very scared. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, let's He's see. the Do one we have... that gives us the downvote each time. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have more questions? <laughs> uh, I mean, we do, but we're like over an hour by now. I think we have to. I think we have to stop I at am, this point. Yeah, this this madness has to stop now. I I think your mustache is a good thing to end on. <laughs> so we are ending on nothing. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are. Well, thank you guys for joining us. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and leave some extra comments in the comments below. Obviously, if you have questions, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Ring the bell. Check out the website, of course, where you can get all the latest news that is news. And check out Patreon. And join the Discord. Thanks to all the patrons. Yes, thank you for all the patrons that are already helping us out. We appreciate you. Love you very much. And we will see you in the next one. Also, John, if you're listening... Uh, we love you, but you got to stop watching the Apple Power PC thing. It's it's hurting your health. We hate seeing you decline like this. Please get some help. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if he actually listens. To-